Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of today's guests, including Farhan, standing by, brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Giants are at the LEC for a pair of games this weekend. Saturday night, they take on the Blades of Saskatoon at 7. Also, come celebrate Family Day with the Giants on Monday as they take on Spokane with a special 2 p.m. puck drop. Love those afternoon dates. Get your tickets now at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. Usually when I go to the Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox at this point, I'll read a text that agrees with one of you, but I'm, I'm going yeah. to go, go with somebody who agrees with me. This is Ed from uh, North Vancouver. 100% Donnie, it's a tank. Without saying it's a tank. Mm. That's Ed from North Vancouver. The one guy who uh, agrees <laughs> <laughs> agrees with me in the Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox. We're joined now from Not. TSN by Farhan Lalji. How are you, sir? Good boys, how you doing? Very well, very well. Uh, Farhan, do you think deep down the Canucks were pleased with last night? They they're competitive, but they lose to the Rangers and the Coyotes win, and they're hot lately. Canucks dropped to the fifth worst record in the league. It, behind the scenes, do you think they're pleased? They're okay with that? Yeah, I think so. And I think if you're Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin, it, it kind of is the perfect win or the perfect result. Uh, because they, they did come back. They played some level of entertaining hockey on the offensive end because they did wind up with four goals, and, and fans like to see that, and Kuzmenko put on a bit of a show, and, you know, all those things are, are positive, but at the end of the day, you want to lose right now. You, you do, and they know that, and Rutherford's admitted as much. So, um, you know, tank and, and rebuild are kind of different things here, but I think where you're going to really find out whether or not this is a, a full-on tank or not is the deployment of Thatcher Demko when he comes back, right? Because if, uh, you know, he's the one thing I've said before, Demko is the one thing that takes this from a retool to a rebuild, whether or not they trade him, right? Um, because if it's a real retool, they have to keep him, right? Because he's the one good contract they have. If they trade him, then maybe it is kind of a rebuild without saying it. And from a tank perspective, look, I asked Jim Benning, or sorry, Jim Rutherford this directly when the whole Tanner Pearson, uh, you know, wrist injury, and they brought the doctors out. And after that, Rutherford took a lot of questions. And I asked him directly, and he, he did admit that, yeah, we can deploy players specifically. We can make decisions specifically. If you're Rick Tockett, you're probably really frustrated seeing the continued defensive gaps oh. this team makes and how poor their coverage is. That's got to get him frustrated because it means the message isn't getting there. It's only been a couple of weeks. Maybe it gets there, but organizationally, perfect result last night. Your opinion of Arthur Silov's debut in the NHL. What did you learn? Oh, boy. I learned that he's young. I, I learned the Canucks' back end is bad, which I knew to begin with. You know, it was it, he, he let in a couple of tough goals, right? There's a vintage had five-hole goal. And, you know, I know he pump-faked and got him to open, but he seemed like he hung on to it long enough that archers could have gotten set. I don't know that there were a lot of bad goals. You know, that was kind of a meh. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, but for the most part, it was just high end scoring chances. And think of the one that, uh, think of the one that um, in his own end where JT Miller puts right on Tarasenko's stick in the slot, like mm -hmm. right there. And that doesn't go in. He made a five alarm save at one point uh, in the third period as well. I can't remember who it was on, uh, on, you know, in a lone clean. So it's amazing to me the number of times a Canuck goalie gives up five goals or more and they still make like three five alarm saves, right? So, uh, I thought he was. I thought he was fine. No worse than the goaltending performances the Canucks have been getting to this point. Farhan, you've coached sports. You've benched guys, and you know it's 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 a human reaction to a benching. You can sulk, or you can come back and say, "I'm going to prove the coach wrong." Kuzmenko's done that three times last week. Last three points now is the last two. He clearly went and got the video work. He's clearly an athlete that said, "You know what? You bench me, but I'm not going to sulk. I'm going to come back and show you." And he did that last night. Yeah, and Rick Talk had said afterwards that even after this game, he came to him and said, more video, more video, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which tells you he's got a desire to learn, right? And it is funny because I asked him specifically, and he took the question the wrong way. And, and I said, you know, with your last couple of performances, do you think you're gaining the coach's trust back? And he thought I was asking him whether or not he trusted the coaches. And he kind of looked at me like, you know, that's, that's a silly question, of course, or I wouldn't have signed a contract. Uh, but, you know, I, I was certainly asking it the other way and, and talking to Rick Talking, yeah, he's earning that back. There's still some work to do defensively, but it seems like Kuzmenko is willing to do that. But that, you know, between the legs move that he made mm -hmm. with the shot off the crossbar and Garland scoring, like, 
there's just not enough of that in this lineup, right? You've got him and Pedersen, and, and that's kind of where it ends in terms of that level of wow creativity. So, you know, if you need to send a message, that's great, but you better not make it a long message where you fracture the relationship, and clearly that hasn't happened here. Uh, Farhan, you're all over CFL free agency. Uh, tell us how the yeah. BC Lions did uh, additions and deletions. They did okay. You know, I, I, they certainly didn't make a lot of high-end additions, and, and I knew that they couldn't, right? The fact that they were able to get the Dominic Rhyme situation figured out yeah. was really important for them as, as that thing looked like it was going to go south on Sunday. Um, but, you know, th- this is a good roster, and they're, they're a roster that all of a sudden went from a $75,000 quarterback to a $350,000 quarterback, and that money's got to come from somewhere. So they just weren't in a real position to, to add. You know, they, they lost more than they added, but I, I do think that it's still a good roster. Uh, and they managed to stay stable, which I think matters. And when you look at how young they've been the last couple of seasons, you know, I, I think they're going to be that much better as a result of, of just gaining some experience. So, you know, overall, uh, I think the big addition was probably Justin McInnes, who might allow them some racial flexibility on the offensive side where they might go two Canadians instead of uh, instead of just one like they did last year with Katoy. So we'll see what that turns into. But, you know, they did, they did okay. Other teams needed to make bigger splashes, and they did. Yeah, and one of those teams, uh, Hamilton, who stole a couple mm-hmm. of lines. Okay, uh, Chiefs beat the Eagles in Super Bowl 57. You were there in Phoenix. Farhan, how far away is Patrick Mahomes to that elite level of Brady, uh, Montana? Uh, you, you sound, you look like you're surprised that the, by the question. I, 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 yeah, yeah, like I, I, look like, I look like I'm Andre Kuzmenko looking at me yesterday. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yes, yeah, of course. This five-year stretch is the best stretch of football ever seen in the National Football League. Ever! Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Joe Montana never did this. Mm -hmm. They never played the game like Patrick Mahomes played the game. Yeah, they might have had more Super Bowls in a small stretch. You know, Brady had three. um, But in terms of just making the game look easy, toying with the opposition, um, carrying his team... You know, when you look at the uh, expected points added by defense and special teams, Patrick Mahomes in these five years is 29. That's how little help he's getting from his defense and special teams. You know what Tom Brady had in that stretch? Second. The defense was great. The special teams were great. They played great situational football. The coaching on all three phases was great. Here, Andy Reid is an offensive savant, but... Patrick Mahomes, when you look at the help he's getting in the other two phases of the game, is making chicken salad out of chicken poop. And nobody has done what Patrick Mahomes has done. He's revolutionized the position. Kids want to be Patrick Mahomes, just like Steph Curry did in basketball. And that's good or bad if you're a coach. Some of them freak out. But he has made the game look easy against the best players in the world. Again, if if his career ended today, he's in the Hall of Fame. He is incredible. Yeah, and I think I think the his opinion or the opinion of him uh, from a lot of people went up uh, several notches because he did what he did this time around uh, while uh, injured. Hey, back to the CFL for a second, Farhan. I was reading an article yeah. uh, last week. How much does the CFL have to worry about? And this has been going on for a while now. But how much does the CFL have to worry about the XFL, the new XFL, and the USFL? Yeah, I think they've got to worry, and you're seeing it already with players like Darnell Sankey and, and Cameron Kelly, and even a couple of Canadians like Herji Mayala and Richie Sandani uh, taking NFL or taking XFL or USFL opportunities, right? So um, I think those players would have preferred to stay in the CFL if they were getting top of market CFL salaries, right? Mm. But in the end, you know, one of the things is, is that a defensive back and linebacker tend to be the most disposable positions in this league along with running backs those guys rarely get paid big Mm -hmm. so i think they wanted to stay they didn't get the number that they wanted so rather than coming into the second wave and that's where it's going to be affected more because you get into the second wave of cfl free agency a couple days after uh, day one and that's where you can find value and I think there's going to be less value because now those players are going to have another option because, yeah, the CFL can pay you more money, but if it's not going to pay you significantly more, then why not play a shorter season and still keep your NFL dream alive? So a lot of it depends on the ages of the guys, right? Kelly's still in that window where he can do it. Sankey, it's a bit more of a reach. He's a little older. Um, you know, the Canadian receivers that went, you know, you, you don't want to see that, right? And very rarely can a Canadian go do that because in these cases – they both have visas and they both have dual citizenship, right? So they can do that. But those leagues aren't paying 
for Canadian players to get their visas. So you know, I don't think that's going to be a huge concern. And if those guys were deemed as locked in Canadian starters where they'd get paid more, they probably would have stayed. So, you know, a bit of both, right? If you're a, if you're a high end guy, you're staying, but that depth is going to be tested by these leagues for sure. All right. To sum up, uh, you're a fan of Patrick Mahomes. Farhan, thanks for this. I'm a fan of him and Jalen Hurts. That was the best part for me. Those are my two favorite quarterbacks. They both played lights out. Love to see it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Farhan, thanks uh, so much for doing this. We'll talk to you next week. See you guys.